this is our last question of the June 2023 paper. Number six, which says 6A. Amoja Bank Limited has allocated a huge budget to its management development programs. Justify this decision. So what is management development programs? These are just the programs that are conducted towards managers for the purposes of boosting their skills, their knowledge and abilities on management, on their management roles and responsibilities. Just like the way you need to train your employee, you need to develop your employee so that you can increase on his knowledge and on his abilities and skills. You can do the same way to your managers. Doesn't mean that if you're a manager, you are a know-it-all. Doesn't mean that if you're a certain executive, you are a know-it-all. These executives and managers also need to undergo training or need to undergo development programs. So when you talk of management development programs, these are some of the initiatives that are taken towards the executives or the managers of the organization to uh, to increase on their knowledge, to increase on their abilities, to increase on their skills, and uh, basically help them uh, have more uh, more experience on the on the on their roles and uh, responsibilities. So why do you think uh, it's justifiable for an organization to budget for management development programs? Why should an organization put aside a huge budget for management development programs? This is because uh, such development programs will always help you or will always give you something positive to count on. And one of the reasons as to why we need to justify it is because you'll be able to grow your own management talent. The managers that you have there will be able to get the necessary skills, the necessary knowledge and abilities to improve on their roles. Number two, you'll be able to expose them to higher, to, 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 to higher heights. If you're a manager already, there are some things that you know. But the more you go for these programs, the more you go and learn things that maybe you didn't know. So you get to know you get to know new skills. You get to, uh, to update on the already existing skills that you that you have. So it will help you to upskill your managers, and then also it will help you to retain and reduce to retain talent and also reduce churn rate. Remember, here we are talking in terms of the employees, but you are referring to the managers, huh? because the managers or the executives are also part of the employees in their organization so you'll be able to retain the the managers you'll be able to reduce standard when you talk of standard this is the rate at which managers leave the organization maybe they resign or just that like they, they don't want they, they no longer want to work with you some something of that sort so the moment to you take your managers to these development programs you equip them well and there's no way basically they want to lose you so that is how you reduce the churn rate. You'll also help them in building the human capital. When you talk of human capital, you are referring to the knowledge, skills, experience, and competency. So the moment you take your managers to these programs, you are able to increase their knowledge. You are able to increase their skills. You are able to increase on their experience. You are able to increase on their competency. And all this is an advantage that justifies uh, you to uh, budget for management development programs. And then lastly, uh, number five, you'll be able to stand out from competition. It will give you a competitive advantage. People will, will basically associate you to be a, a, a high ranking or or maybe a, a credible or maybe a superior organization and so on just because you take your managers for training because most of the times when you talk of training and development what comes into your mind is just the junior staff or the people working in the lower level of management no even the managers and the executives also need to be to be to be trained they need to be developed so the moment you practice that or the moment you basically set aside a budget for uh, uh, training and developing your managers you are trying to uh, to beat up with the competition that could be there in the industry because not so many companies basically do so. So that will give you a competitive ad advantage. And all these uh, points or all these discussions justify the reason as to why it is proper, well, and good to budget for employee, for, for management development programs. So that is number 6A. Then we have number 6B, 
analyze the ways in which artificial intelligence may be applied in human resource management. Artificial intelligence can, can be applied in almost all functions of HR. But let's check some of the common areas where artificial intelligence is being applied. It can be applied in recruiting because remember you have all the information that you need for you to know uh, who is eligible for a certain position because for you to recruit you basically need CVs. You'll need applications from the applicants. And then uh, these applications need to be screened out. So when you talk of artificial intelligence, this is the use of machines. You automate the hiring process fully. Instead of using manual law of doing it, do it automatically. The moment to embrace artificial intelligence at the human resource level, that means it can help you do the recruitment because all the information will be there in the system, in the software, and the software could help you even screen out the CVs and basically uh, uh, reduce the workload for you. Also, artificial intelligence can be applied in performance review because the performance of the employees is always, is always also fed in the systems uh, and the softwares of the organization. So through AI, you can be able to review the performances of the employees so that you make decisions accordingly you know who is to go for training who is to be promoted who is basically to to go for for some development programs who is to be demoted who is to be terminated if need be and so on and so forth you can be able to review the performance of employees through ai that is also another area of application another area of application is employee onboarding and offboarding processes yes instead of you taking through your employees uh, uh, to some sort of orientation, they can do it online. They, you can use a, a software whereby these employees could be taken through and fully understand how your organization basically works. So AI can also help in such perspectives. Also, you can apply it in employee engagement initiatives. And um, when you talk of employee engagement initiatives, this, this could include things like surveys, uh, uh, some sort of research, AI can also help you do, do, do the, the, the survey programs or maybe research programs whenever there are queries, whenever there are problems to be addressed through the use of artificial intelligence, employment engagement initiatives can become possible as well. And then also it can be applied in workforce planning because uh, you will be having the necessary information that you need to know when you need to recruit, when you need to do some sort of training and development program when you need to do some applications so that people could, uh, when you need to do some advertisement so that people could apply for jobs and so on and so forth. So AI or artificial intelligence can be applied in most areas of human resource development. But the ones that I've just mentioned here are just some, but a, but a few of them that I've just mentioned and the whereby uh, most commonly, most commonly used or most commonly applied. So that is our last question of that paper, uh, June 2023. Thank you. And uh, let's meet in some other revision session.